It's launched on an Ariane 5 and separated from its uh, upper stage and then it starts its, uh, its long coasting period towards the, uh, the station. About the first thing that, uh, that we have to do, of course, is to deploy the solar arrays. It, uh, it needs to, uh, to have power. Uh, it needs four kilowatts of power to, uh, to keep it going throughout its entire mission. And uh, they're deployed and the antennas are deployed so that uh, we can start the, nav the navigation process. And it goes through uh, a phasing uh, period of, of quite a considerable uh, period of time. It's about seven days before it starts the, the proximity operations, uh, those operations near the station. And there we, uh, uh, we have a very new departure for, uh, for Europe and I think a unique system as far as uh, spacecraft are concerned as well. It's a laser-based system, two different types of lasers that are used to home in on the, uh, the station. It's controlled by a ground center in, uh, in Toulouse. Uh, it's not flown in by astronauts. Uh, this is an automated vehicle controlled from the ground, but in fact it, uh, it controls itself from one hold point to another and is checked out by the ground and then given the authority to, uh, to move to its next uh, location. And the crew inside that are monitoring the, uh, the approach of ATV um, get data, they get range, and they get range rate data as it uh, approaches so they can see if everything is, uh, is in good shape. If they're really upset or if they think that we're coming in too fast or on the wrong line, they do have a very, very large red button they can press to, uh, to tell it to go away. Um, we've tried to train them not to touch that button, but uh, mm -hmm. astronauts will be astronauts. Uh, but they can uh, see the thing uh, coming in and check, and they are another level of, uh, of checking on the, uh, on the accuracy of the approach. Uh, and then it comes in and it docks to the, uh, the back end of the service module using the, uh, the Russian docking system. The, uh, the mechanical aspect of the, uh, the docking is exactly the same as Soyuz and Progress because we dock to the same station as uh, to the same service module port. And then the hatch is opened and uh, the internal transfer of cargo is performed by the, uh, the astronauts that uh, uh, will, during the mission, uh, slowly and gradually take the, uh, the cargo from ATV in. They'll take it in when it's needed. It's not all offloaded on day one because ATV can stay at the station for up to six months. So it can be used as a storage location as well. And as we empty things out, we, uh, we put trash back in. A big feature of the, uh, the ATV is that it can reboost the, uh, the station. Uh, it can reboost the entire station, uh, which will be nearly 400 tons by the time it's, uh, it's finished. So that's a lot of oomph that it needs to, uh, to compensate for the decaying orbit that, uh, that, the, that the station has. And that's a, a major feature of the, uh, of the ATV mission will be the, uh, the reboost. When it's completed its, uh, its mission, which I say is up to six months, it then goes into a, a controlled and safe but destructive, well, it's safe for everybody apart from the ATV. Uh, it's a destructive re-entry. Uh, landing in the, uh, the bits that do land will land in, uh, in a broad footprint across the, uh, the southern Pacific in a very unpopulated area. We have to, uh, to meet extremely stringent safety requirements. At